Hello summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and I'm here with our 1218 low elo tier list. Our regular tier list, which we post with the patch rundown and mid-patch updates, is aimed at around the high gold to platinum skill level. This one covers everything below that. Obviously, any tier list is a bit nuanced, but in general, this is a great way to know what champions to pick and which to avoid to instantly give you a better shot at winning your solo queue games. And one last thing, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players, and they're available 24-7 just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head on over for some professional help now. First, we'll start off with our top laners. We kind of underestimated where Set would be after the buffs last patch. It turns out a bit of damage and some extra slowing power really went a long way, and he went from above average to one of the best performers in the role. So we're moving him up to the OP tier. If you're a super aggro player that likes to constantly scrap in lane, then he's your guy. So be sure to bring Ignite or Ghost for better results. TP on Set is pretty useless. Another mistake we made was underestimating how strong Maokai would be with his mini revamp. We knew his fighting power would be better, but he's been absolutely OP. Riot was quick to come up with some nerfs that will be hitting this patch, but we think he's definitely still gonna be good enough to make the S tier. The only nerf that really affects top lane Maokai is the one to his healing. A whole 2% of his passive is definitely a good little chunk, but he's still gonna be hard to bring down, has a ton of CC, and does a ridiculous amount of damage on top of it all. And the best thing is, he doesn't really have a weak point in the game. His early trading is decent, and his gank setup is ridiculous. And if you get a lead, his ability to force trades means he can usually snowball pretty hard in most matchups. Late game, he's incredibly disruptive in fights and can even make game-winning catches with a good flash W on an overextended enemy carry. Shivana's moving down to the S tier. Remember, the difference between S tier and OP tier is pretty minimal. Champions in both tiers can 1v9 pretty hard, it's just a matter of how consistent and overbearing they are. Shiv's kit seems kind of underwhelming for a top laner at first. She isn't super mobile, so you think she wouldn't be able to do much. But the thing is, Shiv doesn't need to force trades or do anything to apply pressure. She's a hard scaling pick, so it's really on your enemy to try to shut you down before you get too hot to handle. But the thing about Shiv is she hits really hard. Her W and E both make her a really powerful duelist in extended trades, and with Ignite, you can easily kill most enemies in an all-in fight. Udir has come a really long way since his BGU's release and has become a pretty solid pick in both the top lane and jungle. But even though his win rate itself isn't all that crazy, Riot isn't too happy with how people are actually playing Udir. The Sunfire Demonic Embrace build with R-Max just makes him a boring, low-skill champion. He always provides a certain amount of impact, but can never really hard carry games. The changes this patch should give him a higher carry ceiling with an AD build and Q-Max, but it may also be really feast or famine. So for now, we'll just put him in the B tier. Trundle is being demoted to the B tier. His recent nerfs hit a lot harder than we thought they would, and he went from being an OP blind pickable top that did well into just about everything, to becoming a pick that you only want to use to counter specific foes. Vayne is moving down to the C tier. Like most ranged top laners, you go into the game expecting to bully hard with Vayne, but in reality, it just doesn't usually go as well as you think. You may pick on your opponent in the first few levels, but after just a single gank, you're giving your enemy some breathing room and then you usually end up getting outscaled. There's pretty much always a better option than Bane if you need a tank breaker. Nar is being dropped all the way down to the D tier. There just isn't a scenario where picking him makes much sense. When Nar is good, he's way too good. The only way Riot really knows how to balance him is to beat him into the ground, like he is right now. Now for the jungle, here's our list. We're moving Belveth up to the OP tier. She's probably the best combination of being a hyper carry and having early game presence that you're gonna get in this role. Her ganks are good, she snowballs like crazy, and her ability to take towers after getting Rift and Baron allows you to very quickly get crazy gold swings for your team. We severely undervalued the buffs Nocturne got for 1217. He definitely deserved to be in the OP tier back then. But with the nerfs he's getting this patch, he'll be toned down just a bit, but I'm pretty sure he's still easily gonna be S-tier worthy. 
It seems like Riot has pushed out a ton of nerfs to Kane over the past year, both directly to the champion and indirectly by targeting the items and runes he uses. Every time it sounds like he may finally be going away, but he always ends up right back in the S or OP tier. But surely this time it'll be different, right? We're moving him down to the A tier for now. There's maybe even a chance he'll go lower, or maybe we're wrong again and he's still gonna be S tier. Check back next time to see how things turn out. While Fiddlesticks continues to be a monster of a pick in higher elo, right now he doesn't look all that great in silver and under levels of play. Maybe it's a lack of coordination, or maybe it's because people don't take the time to clear out vision before ulting. But either way, we're moving him down to the A tier here. Mundo Top is still doing super well in the lower ranks, but as a jungler, he's sort of fallen off out of nowhere. He's definitely not the worst pick in the role, but he's not the best either. He's just average, and I'd personally rather pick a more impactful, beefy champion. In last patch's tier list, we talked about how Hecarim likely wouldn't be much better in low elo because the champion just historically doesn't do that well here. He's snowbally, but also very feast or famine, and he just usually ends up hungry. And we were right, he's still been pretty bad here. But with there being a massive amount of player sentiment calling him ridiculously OP and high elo right now, Riot is quickly throwing out some nerfs to slow his roll. His win rate is already in the red, and with him getting even worse now, we're moving him down to the C tier. We're moving both Pantheon and Zed up to the C tier. The D tier is just a bit too crowded right now. C tier basically means you should still stay away from them, but they're just not quite as awful as their D tier brethren. Speaking of D tier, Kiana is being moved down there again. She's just way too inconsistent of a pick, with very little chance of snowballing hard enough early to actually have an impact on how the game goes. She can't duel any other junglers, her ganks are meh, and even if she gets a kill here or there, Kiana has been so heavily nerfed that you still can't do much with her. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Garen gets added to the list as an OP tier pick. Not having him on this in the first place was a bit of an error on our end. We already have him listed as a mid laner on our standard tier list. Garen's kit may not scream mid laner, but you'd be surprised at how well he does here. His trading is nuts against foes that allow him to get in range. Those he can't touch, he just easily outshoves. He can consistently get prio and will pretty much always be more useful in early game skirmishes. We're also adding Set to the OP tier for mid lane. We've talked about him plenty of times in the past as a counterpick to certain champions, but after his last round of buffs, he's so good that he's actually blindable. He's arguably even better than Garen at shutting down assassins, so if you're tired of feeding every time you end up against a Zed or a Katarina, you should really consider adding him to your pool. We'll be moving Vel'Koz down to the S tier. Like many tier adjustments, there isn't some big reason for this, it's just that his performance has dropped just a bit as other shifts in the meta have happened. As far as artillery mages go, he's still definitely the best, so if that's your thing, don't let this small demotion stop you from spamming him. His laning is strong, and he has some of the highest damage potential of any champion in the game in 5v5 teamfights. It's just a matter of finding that perfect angle to geometry your enemies to death. Vagar moves up to the S tier. This one is sort of coming out of nowhere. Vagar has been pretty average lately, but all of a sudden he's doing well enough that I'd say he's even blindable. Obviously, you're not going to contribute much in the early stages of laning, but he spikes harder than you'd think for a champion that's supposed to be so focused on the late game. Vex also moves up to the S tier. We've considered her super strong in the middle and higher elo brackets for a while now, but it took her longer to catch on in the lower levels of skill. Morgana also joins her doomy emo friend in the S tier. If you don't really like to interact much in the laning phase, Morgana is the perfect lane neutralizer for you. She clears waves with zero effort, leaving your foe with no real windows to go in and try to force trades. If they try, you just queue them and walk away. She scales really well with her ultimate of course being an amazing team fighting tool, and even though you're playing her as a carry when you take her mid, you can still use her black shield like a support to enable and protect your allies. We'll be moving Lux up to the A tier this patch. Making the A tier means that she can definitely have a huge impact in games and make some pretty big plays when you play her right. But she's not just quite as consistently a 1v9 champion as higher tier options. Basically, if you like her, she's viable right now. You just may have the occasional games where you can't really do much. 
Irelia also moves up to the A tier. Her ceiling for carrying is a lot higher than Lux's, but her reason for being in this tier is that she relies on being a lot more fed to do so. Irelia is pretty feast or famine, and she's doing well consistently enough to make it this high, but there's definitely enough bad matchups and enemy comps that can shut her down so that she can't really make it to the S tier. The last champion we have moving up to the A tier is Seraphine. Kind of like Lux, she's here because she can always have a pretty good impact in the game, but can't go any higher because she's rarely going to 1v9. She could be considered a higher tier in higher elos, but in lower elos, super team reliant champions tend to be not quite as good as other options. Now let's move things down to the bottom lane. We actually don't have a single change for bot lane this patch. What can I say? Riot usually focus heavily on the rest of the map and lets the bot lane meta rot for long periods of time. Miss Fortune's nerf may be enough to move her down a notch, but for now, we think she'll be good enough to stay right where she is. To finish things off, we have our supports. Similarly, there isn't really much going on here either. The one change we'll make is moving Vex up one level to the C tier. You probably still don't want to pick her in most games, but she's not just an insta-lose like she was before. And that about wraps things up for our 1218 low elo tier list. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Since making this list involves going over all the champions in all the roles, I'm sure we overlooked a pick here or there, so feel free to let us know if you think we missed something down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift and may the LP gods smile down upon you.